And joining me now is a very special guest. The newsmaker of the day is the latest leader from the Congress to switch sides. He's joined the Shiv Sena in Maharashtra. Milind Deora, former South Mumbai MP and Union Minister, joins me. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Mr. Deora. Give us the main reason why you've quit the Congress party. In a letter, you've claimed that the Congress has abandoned its principles. Can you be more specific as to why you chose to leave the Congress, a party which you say your family has been associated with for more than half a century? Well, Razi, thank you for having me on. Um, you know, you've been covering the Congress for a long time. And... Um, you knew my late father as well. Um, the Congress party that I joined in 2004 is fundamentally different from the Congress party of 2024 in many ways. Um, its approach to politics, its way of dealing with its human resources, um, its organizational capability, its approach to issues, its role as a opposition, constructive or destructive, all of these are things which have fundamentally changed in the last few years. I stayed in the party during its, I, I stayed loyal to the party during its most challenging decade from 2014 to 24. I had no post. I was made president of the Mumbai Congress uh, barely 20 days before the Lok Sabha elections. I had no role to play in candidate selection. I was told these are the five candidates in Mumbai. Go out and campaign for them, help them win. I hadn't even moved a chair in that party office. Um, and a few weeks later, after the victory, I was asked why I didn't resign. After the loss, I'm sorry, I was asked why I didn't resign. And I readily resigned. I readily accepted responsibility. I said, no matter the fact that even though I was made president of the party barely 20 days before, I will resign. And I believe that if I, can, if I was accountable and I was willing to take accountability for no role, for no responsibility of, or fault of mine, I have every right to demand accountability. But each and every time I demanded accountability, I was the first person in 2014 who spoke about the fact that the party must introspect. It must have better advisors. In 2019, when the party was looking for a new president, right in the beginning, before the election happened, when which Khargeji got elected, I suggested the names of two young people. My tweet is on record. You can go back and check it today. I was I was. Those, those statements of mine were treated as revolt. I st still stayed loyal to the party, despite being sidelined, despite being punished. For what? For giving constructive suggestions. For giving my best 10, most productive 10 years of my life, from the age of 37 to 47, which I am today, to the Congress staying loyal. Mm -hmm. But there has to come a time where a person has to decide what their purpose in politics is and why you enter this profession for the first time. And I had a very hard time understanding and accepting that. And I realized that for me, politics is about getting something done, about performing and delivering for the people of Mumbai, for the people of Maharashtra, for the people of India. My politics, Rajdeep, in the last 10 years, not once have I made a personal statement against anyone in government, against anyone in any other sector. It's always been constructive. You can criticize on policy. You can criticize on ideas. You can give constructive suggestions sometimes. If the Prime Minister talked about Make in India, give a constructive idea. Why dismiss it? And I found that suffocating where the only objective, where 99% market share of the party is negativity and not positivity. Unfortunately, that is not the politics I was, I, I was raised seeing from my father. That's not what I saw politics as. And I, 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 I just, it reached a point where it was just too suffocating for me. And I had to take a decision. Are, are, you direct, are you directly blaming, in a way, Rahul Gandhi for this? Let's be very clear. In your long note that you've written, you haven't specifically named Rahul Gandhi the individual. Are you blaming him for this lack of accountability or what you call the suffocating atmosphere in the Congress? Because you are perceived to be someone who's very close to the Gandhis. No, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm blaming the party as an institution. Uh, the party transcends an individual. And unfortunately, Rajdeep, we have to get over the notion that the party belongs to one individual. The party transcends individuals. It's an organization. 
Today, for instance, I heard some Congress leaders saying Milind shouldn't have joined, done this on a day when Rahul Gandhi was embarking on a yatra. Think of how entitled that sounds. A good organization would have said a good, talented young person, an experienced person, a good face of our party has a problem. Let's talk to him or her, sit down with them, find a way to resolve an issue. Instead, the party's attitude is you, you resigned and you left and you joined another party on a day when you take media attention away. It just gives you a sense of how entitled the party is and how it's entitled it's become. It's, it, it really pains me to, to when I heard that statement of a leader saying no, no, that one of the senior leaders of the party no, no, sent me that but, message, but many, effectively saying, no, no, but, couldn't, you have, but, couldn't, but you many, have, couldn't you have chosen no, a better day? No, no, but... But, but Milind Devra, there will be those and who when I, when say he that you that, are also was, sorry, part of this that, entitled elite, that, that your that father was a, a multiple leader, times. No, no, when well, one minute. That, my, when he, no, when you use that, the word. No, no, sure. He, but, but let, let me, me finish. No, one second. When let he sent me that message to your me, use of the word when entitled. When that leader sent he, a message will to me Mr. which said, you could have chosen a better day. Yes, I'll come to that. But when that leader said, you could have chosen a better day, I tell you this. That gave me the strength and confidence to take that decision. Mm -hmm. I was still wavering, I would say. But the fact that the party oh. could send me a message like that, couldn't you have chosen a better day, a senior leader, just goes to show how the party thinks, how the party has no ability to deal with human resources. It has no ability to utilize talent. And I'm not somebody who's left in a huff. I'm not somebody who's left in a rush. I've stayed for 10 long years without any power. I'm not someone who's selfish and who, who said, I've lost one election, I'm running away. I didn't do that. I know what the depth of my relationship with this family, the party was. But there comes a time, as I said, where you have to take a decision. You have to identify in life what your purpose is. And your purpose, your loyalty has to be to a greater cause than one party which doesn't value you or a family or someone else or even a leader. And and I believe that the clarion call that the Prime Minister has often made, which he says I, I, that I have two, even if I you're a member points. of the BJP, the, the loyalty to the country is, comes before the party. And when I spoke to Mr. Shinde, I'll tell you, when I spoke to Mr. Shinde, he echoed a similar sentiment. He said that, here, do something for Maharashtra, mm -hmm. help me do something for Mumbai, let's do it together. You have a vision, you have the ability, you have the experience. That is never something I've heard in the Congress in the last few years, unfortunately. I have two issues. One, you use the word entitled, that the party Hello. seems very entitled in the kind of remarks they've made. But many will say you and many around you who've left the party have been equally entitled. You all became ministers while you were in your 30s. You all became MPs because your fathers were in politics. Uh, the party's given you a lot. You've been a, a candidate twice. Uh, apart from the two times you won, you've also in 2014, 19 been the candidate from Mumbai, you are Mumbai Congress chief, you are even today, you are the joint treasurer of the party. They will say, what has the party not given to the Deora family? You are being ungrateful and entitled. How do you respond? So, so yes, the party gave me what it gave me because I come from a political family. I appreciate that. But if the party has given me something, have I not given back to the party? Shall I count what I have given? There are some things which I can't say on public television which I have done for the party. But the party knows that I've given back. At the very least, which everyone knows in public, I gave 10 years. I gave 10 years of loyalty to the party, hoping, against hope, that the party will change, the party will move towards a more constructive agenda. Mm -hmm. That if one senior leader leaves, the party will feel there is a problem. It can't be, if, it, if one leader has left, you can call it an aberration. You can say one leader was selfish, one leader had compulsions and had to leave. If several leaders have left, if several leaders have tried to leave, Surely there's something wrong. Surely there's time for introspection. Surely there's something going wrong in the party. And I gave you the example. The best example is this morning. One of the senior most leaders of the party My. telling, sending me a message. I understand you had to leave, but couldn't you have chosen a better day? Can you imagine? Fine, don't call it entitlement. Is that not arrogant? Is that not foolish? Is that the way... In your can company, I, can I put the, the second India question today. to you? Is that the way the Human this, Resources that Department no, no, or the CEO I, I, I will treat a senior point. anchor?
Okay, I, I take your point, but may I ask you the second question, which is you say you've sacrificed the last 10 years, the best years of your life working for the party. There will be those who will say that you were actually hankering for position, that you wanted a Rajya Sabha MP ship, which was denied to you on more than one occasion from Maharashtra. You've lost two consecutive elections. Therefore, you couldn't have the right to contest from South Mumbai in 2024. The Shiv Sena defeated you there. They have Arvind Savan contesting. Milin Deora is doing this for position. Eknath Shinde is offering you a Rajya Sabha seat. That's why you've chosen to go with Mr. Eknath Shinde. Even though the Shiv Sena is a party that your father, uh, Murli Deora, was seen as an opponent of. My father had very old relations with the Shiv Sena Rajdeep. You know Mumbai's politics better than that. That's a separate issue. If I'm asking for a position, let's say that what you're saying is true. Some will say, as you say, what's wrong in that? What's wrong in asking for a position to be able to serve the people better? The kinds of people who've been sent by the party, let's say, are they better than me? Are they, are they more capable than me to raise the issues of Mumbai and Maharashtra in the parliament of India? Are they better equipped to represent the people of the city? Do they have the connect? Do they have the grassroots a network that I have which can help the party? What is wrong in that? Politics is a game of acquiring power to be able to deliver justice. That is the objective of politics. That is the meaning, the dictionary definition of politics. If you do not have power and you, uh, the party wants to keep you away from power, what, what is wrong? If tomorrow a man comes along and says, I need you, I want you. I want you to come and work with me. I believe you have what it takes to help me make Mumbai a very a, a developed city again, to make Mumbai, to strengthen India's position as, uh, Mumbai's position as India's financial capital, to attract investment to Maharashtra. What's wrong in that? That's what I entered politics for. I'm not ashamed of that. I entered politics to deliver and to work. How, if tomorrow, Rajdeep, someone you tells you, you work for the channel, Go on TV you know every day, I won't pay you, I won't call you the editor. And someone else is saying, no, Rajdeep, I value you, I think you have a network, you are a, a following, please come to my channel, won't you think about it? What's wrong in that? It's not called being selfish. It's called being able to acquire power to deliver justice for the people. You know, th And if there's someone better than me, of course I'm willing to accept that. But what happens is, what happens repeatedly, is if someone feels you know, since people with lesser abilities largely people who unfortunately are psychophants are not willing to say the truth are people who don't want to offer constructive citizen, uh, suggestions but are yes people if they are rewarded and the ones who are offering constructive su suggestions and are real loyalists of an organization are being punished there comes a breaking point 